I was on your website and I have been following some of your content for a while. I saw some of the work that you did with the Fall Brothers, specifically how it related to um, the hollow earth theory and the pillars of the earth and what lies beneath the idea of as above, so below. And I, I went down the rabbit hole on a lot of your content and uh, very quickly came upon where you were talking about some of your expeditions out in Peru. Specifically, I noticed on your website, you went with uh, Anselm P. Rambla. And Anselm guys, P. Rambla, that's correct, yeah. And you guys did an expedition up in the Andes Mountains. Yeah, Anselm, this very interesting uh, line of conversation here. Anselm P. Rambla is uh, a good friend of mine. He's a Spanish explorer. Um, He's one of the I call him the most interesting man in the world. He is certainly one of the most interesting men in the world. Um, he he has conducted extensive research in Peru. He's one of the only guys ever to be given permission to uh, excavate around um, excavate around the megalithic walls of Sacsayhuaman. Wow. One of the only guys who wasn't a member of the archaeological community in Peru. Anselm's not an archaeologist. He has archaeologists on his team. Boak Roos is the name of his exploration company. Um, and he, he actually, not only did he get permission to excavate around the walls of Sacsayhuaman, and he discovered some very important things which we can talk about, but he received unprecedented access to the Cori Cancha. And for those who are familiar with Peru, with Cusco, they'll know that the Cori Cancha was the capital of the Incan Empire. It was the epicenter of the Incan Empire. It was their most important temple. It means the place of gold, Cori Cancha. And of course, inside of the Cori Cancha, you have the Temple of the Sun, the Temple of the Moon, various temples, various mini temples within the grand complex, um, and a very, very important Incan temple again the most important actually and uh, no one really has been given access to excavate inside of the Cori Cancha but it's a very long story and I don't know how deep you want to go down this rabbit hole but Anselm to, to try and truncate the story as much as I can this was back in the 80s back in the early 80s Anselm was was conducting his excavations at Sacsayhuaman when he heard of a legend, he was told about a legend uh, of a tunnel, a man-made tunnel that runs one mile under the ground from the Cori Cancha to the galleries, the legendary galleries beneath Sacsayhuaman. Now, those galleries would be, what, what exactly? Caves. Okay. Basically, basically natural and artificial chambers beneath the Sacsayhuaman megalithic complex. And according to legend, there is a one mile long tunnel that connects the galleries beneath Sacsayhuaman with the Cori Cancha. And as the legend goes, when Francisco Pizarro was making his way to Cusco from Cajamarca, this of that that in and of itself is, is, is a very fascinating story, the conquest of Peru. Pizarro, he he killed Atahualpa, who was the the Sapa Inca, the 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 Incan king, and he was making his way to Cusco to conquer the capital of the Incan Empire. And they knew the the Inca knew that he was coming for their treasure, for their gold. They knew at this time that the Spaniards were there for gold and silver. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the Cori Cancha was a was a vast hoard of gold and silver. Again, it's called the place of gold. The walls of the Cori Cancha were lined with large plates of gold. They were covered in plates of solid gold. The Cori Cancha had a life-size garden in which, uh, rather, the Cori Cancha had a garden in which there were life-size depictions of of humans and animals and plants that were that were made of pure gold and silver. Uh, famously, there was there was rows of corn that were made of silver. The stalks were silver. The head the, the, the head 
the stalk was silver and then the actual the corn was gold solid gold um and and again life-size statues of deer for example cast in solid gold or silver so it was it was as i said a vast hoard of treasure and uh pisaro knew that he would find great wealth great um that he would find large amounts of gold and silver in cusco the capital and so as he's marching towards cusco the inca the the priests and the royal family decide to take the most important artifacts many of them th these gold and silver artifacts there was also a large solar disc made of solid gold inside of the Coricancha, which represented inti the sun god and uh, various depictions of other gods biracocha for example casting mm -hmm. gold and silver and precious stones they took the most important of these artifacts and with a with an army of natives they transported the gold and silver in the in their in their uh priestly artifacts down into what's called the shinkana which is this tunnel that i mentioned which runs from the Coricancha to the galleries beneath saksaiwaman it runs exactly for one mile and again according to legend they took all of these treasures down into the shinkana and they stored them beneath the megalithic complex of Sacsayhuaman in the galleries. And by the time Pizarro got there, all of the most important art Inca artifacts were sequestered away in these hidden galleries. And the entrance to the Shinkana was sealed up. This is the legend, right? This, if you ask an archaeologist about this in Peru, proving archaeologist, they'll tell you that's just a legend. There's no proof mm -hmm. of the, that the, such a tunnel exists. That the uh, that the Shinkana is an actual thing, rather, it's just myth. That's what they'll tell you. That's what you'll hear traditionally sure. in Peru. So Anselm, while he was doing archaeology, while he was uh, conducting his excavations at Sacsayhuaman, he heard of the legend of the Shinkana. And so he decided to take a couple of his guys from his team, his excavation team, and he went down to the Coricancha. Now, it's important to understand that the Coricancha, once it was conquered, once Cusco was conquered by the Spaniards, they built their own palaces and church and cathedrals on top of the old Incan palaces and temples. And so, obviously, Coricancha is the most important Incan temple. So they they built a church on top. In fact, they built a church um, where the temple was and where the where the uh, house of the virgins of the sun, who were the basically the harem of the Inca king mm -hmm. of Atahualpa, uh, all of the virgins of the sun, they lived in a I guess you could call it a sort of a convent next to the Coricancha. Well, when the when the Spaniards took over, they built a cathedral called the Cathedral of Santo Domingo on top of the Coricancha, over the ruins of the Coricancha, which they destroyed, and over the ruins of the House of the Virgins of the Sun, they built a convent of nuns. So they just you know, this is synchronicity. This is this is the practice of the Catholic Church, where they would come into these cultures. They would conquer these cultures, or in the aftermath of the conquest by the Spaniards, the the Catholic Church would then um, repurpose the temples for cathedrals and so forth. And this is called synchronism. And I think I said synchronicity. I mean, it's called synchronism. And basically synchronize Catholicism with the religion of the Inca. Um, this was a common practice by the Catholic Church all over all over the Americas, in fact. So uh, the Spaniards never found out about the Coricancha, uh, rather, about the Shinkana. This secret was kept and never disclosed by the uh, by the Inca, who were ultimately exterminated because the Inca did not represent all of the natives. Rather, the Inca were only the royal bloodline. All of the other native tribes were subjugated to the royal bloodline. They alone were the Inca. So when we talk about the Inca empire, there's a misnomer 
um, a misconception rather, people think that all of the natives subjugated under the royal family were the Inca, when in fact mm -hmm. only the royal family were the Inca. They were called orejones by the Spaniards because they had these large discs in their in their ears. They had, they, they elongated their earlobes, and they had these large discs. The orejones, the Incan uh, royal, the Inca royal family. So they the secret went to the grave with the priest class and the royal family in regard to the uh, in regard to the shinkana. And by the way, the shin shinkana, the word shinkana means the place where one gets lost because mm -hmm. it's it's there's there's it gets a little complex there's there's two variations of the shinkana there's the there's the which is funny they call it the shinkana grande which is the large shinkana which is actually the smaller shinkana which is that tunnel that runs from beneath the kori Kancha to beneath the galleries um at saxe Waman. and then there's the general shinkana which is a system of natural and artificial tunnels and caverns beneath the city of Cusco. And these are rumored and these are rumored to run for hundreds, if not thousands of miles beneath the surface of the earth. In fact, they say that um, one could enter the Shinkana, not the, not the Shinkana, not the Shinkana Grande, the general Shinkana beneath the city of Cusco, which is in the central Andes. And without ever coming back to the surface, make their way all the way to the Amazon rainforest in the northeastern part of the country. Now it's how many miles away? Oh, it's hundreds of miles. So, and also to, for example, to, they could go south in the Shinkana and pop out in Tiwanaku in Bolivia, hundreds of miles away. So, uh, but let's refocus on the Shinkana Grande, this, this particular legendary tunnel, man-made, that connects Kori Kancha with Saksai Waman. So back to Anselm. Anselm, curious about this legend, because after all, he is doing excavations at Saksai Waman. He went to the, the cathedral of Santo Domingo, and he wanted to inquire about the legend to see if it was true. And he was met, he actually was able to uh, meet with the prior, who's the head who's the, uh, the head priest there at the, at the cathedral. And these, by the way, are the Dominicans. This is the order of the Dominicans mm -hmm. uh, that own the property now. And this is back in the early eighties. Ansel meets with the prior and he asks him about the Shinkana, the legend of the Shinkana. And the prior told him it's not a legend, it's real. And Ansel was kind of taken aback because uh, in Peru, and again, according to archeologists, it's just a legend. Mm -hmm. And after, after, conferring with the prior about the legend, the prior said, do you want to see it? Would you like to see the, the Shinkana? And Anselm said, yes, of course. So they went into the cathedral. They helped the prior move, slide this altar um, that was covering a trap door built into the floor, a wooden trap door. So they slid the altar out of the way, they opened up the trap door, and they begin to descend into a crypt and they go down into a crypt beneath the, beneath the cathedral. And Anselm can see that there's a sarcophagus there, several sarcoph sarcophagi, mm -hmm. no doubt with the bodies of important Dominicans inside. And he notices that there's this, there's this brick wall. And it seems to be covering up a tunnel. But there's parts of it that are, are incomplete, the brick wall. There's like a, a section of it where you can peek your head through. And so... He asked the prior, what is this brick wall? What is this covering? The prior said, that is the entrance to the Shinkana. And Anselm, and they had flashlights on them, and they had this high-powered flashlight, and they flashed into the, into the tunnel, and he said he could see that the tunnel went on and on. So it went a mile. And he, and he noticed that the walls of the tunnel were lined with megalithic blocks hmm. in the same fashion as the walls of... Kori Kancha above. So they're under the Kori Kancha, under the cathedral, which is built on top of the Kori Kancha. And they're looking at a megalithic tunnel, a man-made tunnel that's paved with, um, with the andesite, the same andesite blocks as the Inca temple. Sure. And these things are like, 
some of them weighing 60, 80, 100 tons. Well, that's Sacsayhuaman. That's where the okay. tunnel goes, beneath Sacsayhuaman. They are beneath the Coricancha, okay. which there's, there's smaller stones, no less exquisite in regard to the masonry, but there's smaller sto stones in the Coricancha, and they're made of, made of andesite, and they're very finely worked and fit together. Um, and so, anyway, Anselm says to the prior, this is great. I've got a team excavating at Sacsayhuaman. We can halt our progress there. I can bring the team here. We can take this wall down, this brick wall, and we can explore the Coricancha. And he's obviously very excited. Let's go in. I've got all the equipment. We can do this. And Anselm told me that in that moment, the prior's countenance changed, completely changed. And suddenly he became very hostile. Hmm. And he said, no, 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 no. You will not do that. Yeah, you were absolutely not. Get out of here. I should not have showed this to you. Get out of my church. And he, he kicked Anselm and his team out. All of a sudden, his countenance changed when Anselm suggested that they should go and get the team and take down the bricks and go into the Cody Con into the Shinkana. This would have been one of the greatest archaeological discoveries of all time. <laughs> because remember, according to the legend, all of the most important Incan artifacts sure. are concealed ben beneath the walls of Sacsayhuaman and the hidden galleries beneath the walls of Sacsayhuaman. So um, who knows what else is under there? So uh, Anselm obviously was, was, unable to further explore the the shinkana but he now knew it was real the legend was true um now anselm continued his excavations finished his excavations completed his, ex his excavations at saksaywaman they discovered by the way without going into too much detail here they discovered by the way as they were excavating down into the down to the lower levels of Sacsayhuaman. Sacsayhuaman, what you see today, that's only part of the complex. Most of those walls are gone. The, the upper levels for sure were taken down by the Span were disassembled by the Spaniards who used them to build their cathedrals and palaces. Now, is the that why we see some, because you mentioned uh, a rebuilding effort taking place. Is that why we see different rocks up here as opposed to these very tightly cut and fit ones down here? That looks like Machu Picchu. Is that Machu Picchu? Ugh. I think that's Machu Picchu there. All right. Well, I, I ran a search for Sacsayhuaman. This is what it but yielded. But it is true that at Sacsayhuaman, you have the same phenomenon. You have areas yeah, of the wall yeah. that are in disrepair. And the Inca rebuilt, repaired the walls, but but with much in with with much inferior skill. Sure. So um, it's very crude and rudimentary repairs of the walls. It's not the same techniques as the original construction, those huge polygonal megalithic blocks. Mm -hmm. So Anselm, uh, while he's digging in the lower levels, he discovered pre-Incan artifacts. So he discovers pre-Inca artifacts down near the foundation of Sacsayhuaman, and he understands immediately that this is conclusive evidence that the Inca did not build those walls, that Sacsayhuaman was there when the Inca, before the Inca established Cusco as their, as the capital city of their empire. Hmm. In other words, these are very ancient walls, pre-Inca for sure. And it's conclusive. Now, archaeologists reject, they rejected the evidence that Anselm found. He documented it. He's got videos and pictures and everything. Clearly, pre-Inca artifacts no Inca artifacts, just pre-Inca artifacts at the lower levels. Mm -hmm. So that's definitive proof that the walls of Sacsayhuaman were not built by the Inca, but by a much older culture, in my sure. estimation, an antediluvian culture. So anyway, fast forward. That was, that was um, I believe, if I, I, I don't have notes in front of me, I believe it was the early 80s when that when he was excavating there. Fast forward a number of years, I think seven years transpired. And miraculously, I won't go into the details, but miraculously, Anselm gets the approval to excavate in the Coricancha. Wow. Unprecedented. 
unprecedented. Um, and it, that that in and of itself is a is just a crazy story how he was able to do that. Um, but he was. Long story short, he got the approval, and of course, Anselm was just conducting a standard archaeological excavation on paper. But you know what he was looking for. He wanted to get back down into the mm -hmm. Shinkana. That was the goal. That was the mission. The objective was to get into the Shinkana. He knew where it was, right? He had he'd gone down there with the with the previous prior. There was a new prior, by the way. The old one was gone. There was a new prior. Uh, his name was Father Gamara. Uh, I met him actually in Cusco with Anselm. Really? So, and this is now, I think we're talking about 1988 uh, or something like that. I don't remember the exact dates. So Anselm, he's, he thinks this is going to be easy. He's going to go move away the altar and go down, open up the trap door and go down. It yeah. wasn't like that at all. When he got there with his team, they slid the altar away. They opened up the trap door. And in fact, uh, actually, let me back up. They slid away the altar. There was no trap door. It was gone. The hmm. Dominicans had retiled the floor. Oh. Now, Anselm, now he can't find the trap door, so he had to bring in ground penetrating radar to try and discover a, a way in, right? Because he's not he's not going to tear up the the tiles sure. of the of the floor. He's got to find a new way in. Um, there are obviously restrictions on what he could and couldn't do and his ex excavations in the Cody Concha. So Anselm brings in the ground penetrating radar. He knows where to look for the, the crypt. And when he passes the, the radar over where the crypt should be, he found something astounding. Somebody had filled the crypt in with debris. <laughs> it was completely blocked. Do you think that was done after they had initially spoken to the prior earlier? the the one before the current one and said hey we, we're gonna bring the team back here and pull these uh the, these bricks out and check it out you think it was done uh, after I, that there was an earthquake um hmm. in subsequent years since anselm had spoken to the prior originally and i think there were some repairs that had to be done on the foundations of of the cathedral so i think it was expedient at that moment to cover up the entrance to the shinkana okay so by the way, I'm skipping over a lot of details. There's a lot of crazy <laughs> stuff right. going on here. So um, Anselm is frustrated. He can't get into the crypt. So he gets into other crypts. He's trying to he's trying to worm his way into the crypt where he knows that the entrance to the Shinkan is. Um, ultimately, <laughs> skipping over a lot of very interesting details, he gets For kicked sure. out. He oh, gets geez. kicked out. They kick him out. Um and he discovered, by the way, as he's doing these excavations beneath the Coricancha, that the foundations of the Coricancha are not andesite, like, like the stones above. The, the walls of the Temple of the Sun, the Temple of the Moon, and so forth, are devised of andesite. As I said, very finely cut and, yeah. and um, positioned and, and fitted andesite blocks. Beautiful masonry. The foundations are, in fact, megalithic diorite. Now, where does green that land diorite. on the hardness scale? It's very hard. Megalithic green diorite. Why is this significant? Because the foundations, the megalithic foundations of Cusco, the other megaliths, like the Temple of Inca Roca, they call it, which is mm -hmm. this amazing, this, the foundations of this temple are still standing in Cusco. Just this amazing stonework. This is where the famous stone of the 12 angles, angles is located. That's also green diorite, the foundations of those, um, some of those megalithic. In fact, all of the megalithic buildings in Cusco, the foundations are green diorite. What, what does this tell us? This tells us that there was a very ancient megalith building culture present in that region long before the Inca and the Inca built on top of those green diorite foundations. Wow. So, um, so anyway, uh, Anselm was, his objective was uh, hindered obviously because of the, the, the fact that the, that the crypt had been filled in and, and he was kicked out of the church. He was kicked out of the cathedral and, and was not allowed to pursue any more excavations in Cusco. 
Hmm. Um, well, fast forward 20 years or whatever it was, more than that, 30, whatever, whatever, whatever it was, because I went back to Peru with Anselm uh, various times. I've been with I've been with Anselm in Peru on multiple occasions at doing all kinds of very interesting things. But on a particular occasion, 2019, we were filming for a TV series, me and uh, my partner, Gary Haven, and our, and our film crew. We were down there filming an episode in this series. And while we were there, we had in our possession, we had acquired state-of-the-art ground-penetrating radar technology, Russian technology. Oh, wow. There were only a couple of units in the world. Like, I think there were three units in the world, and we had one of them. It wasn't cheap. Oh, so you um, guys bought it, or was it on loan? We, well, we bought it. Oh, and uh, this technology is, is quite remarkable. We have the ability, have the ability to see 300 feet beneath the surface of the Earth, 100 meters. We can see that's we have two different antennas. We have a deep penetrating antenna and we have a shallow penetrating antenna. Our deep penetrating antenna goes down 300 feet beneath the surface of the earth in in optimal conditions. Our shallow penetrating antenna has higher resolution, but it only goes about 20 feet. But we can see a quarter buried 15 to 20 feet beneath <sighs> the surface of the earth with and it's a drone platform and operates off of a drone. Um, now, what's the visual like on that? Is it we can, like we can render it in 3D? Wow. So now, is that with color? Very or is powerful that... technology. It's very powerful technology, and we used it to great effect in Peru. Now, while imagine. we were in Cusco filming, actually, we were filming Sacsayhuaman and 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 some of the other megalithic uh, sites in the city. We decided, knowing full well of uh, Anselm's story. We decided to take our unit, our satellite, uh, rather our antenna, and conceal it in a duffel bag because you have to get permission to fly. You're, they're not, we're never going to get permission to fly this thing around the Cody Concha, right? Sure. So we concealed it in a duffel bag, and we carried it around the perimeter of of the Cody Concha, which is, again, today the, the, cathedral, the cathedral of Santo Domingo. And guess what we discovered? Did you find the tunnels? We found the Shinkana. Oh my gosh. Wow. Now, I've never said this. I don't think I've ever said this, or if I have, I've only said it on a couple of occasions publicly, but we found the Shinkana. Wow. It's there. And it's exactly where Ransom said it was. It's there. It's not a legend. It's a true legend. It's a fact. The Shinkana exists. Ansem saw it with his own eyes, and then I went back and verified it with our ground penetrating radar antenna. You guys it must have there. freaked out. I mean, what was that like? Well, we can't do anything about it, but we know it's there. So um, these are just, th this is just gives you a little background into who Anselm P. Rambla is and some of my adventures with Anselm. And I've had many more adventures with Anselm in Peru. Um, again, he's, he's one of the most, he's one of the most interesting men in the world, I would say. And um, we, we've, we've been all over Peru together. We've been in Paracas. We've been in, the uh, the Cusco region um, and um, and and other places besides. Very very fascinating man, a great friend of mine, and uh, his work is what he discovered is monumental in regard to the well the Shinkana. But he was never able to take a picture or anything like that of the Shinkana. But of the Shinkana. But what he discovered in regard to the the foundations, the megalithic foundations of the Cody Concha and the pre-Inca artifacts at the foundations of, of Sacsayhuaman is history altering in regard to the conquest of Peru and the history of the Inca Empire. No, rather in regard to the, the history of the, of the Inca Empire and the, and the pre-Inca civilizations that built the megaliths. Wow. And that is, folks, that is the the bedrock laid for this entire conversation for you guys. Um, because this Jim touches on this inside of his book, Birthright, which again I haven't gotten to read um all the way through yet. I've um taken a heavy dose of the lectures he's done on there, but this is we're now we're getting into the realm of the the prehistory. 
We're getting into the realm of the sons of God. We're getting into the realm of the watchers. We're getting into the realm of those who were in existence long before man um, with their own technology, with their own lives, as it were, and then things leading up to the fall and what they did on this earth that led up to the flood eventually. Um, if I may, I would like to yeah. actually, before we pass on here from the subject of Anselm and my adventures with Anselm P. Ramla. Sure. Uh, Find a picture of him. We, uh, as I said, we were filming in Peru um, for this TV series. And, and, and during the duration of this, which I was in filming for three months in Peru, it was a huge team, 20 guys. Um, we had a 20-man team. That story is crazy. There's Anselm. That story is crazy, what happened when we were down there filming. Um, by the way, I tell that story in a private briefing on my members platform, the elbrinoanalysis.com is my members platform. And I do private briefings once a week. And my first private briefing, I tell some of these stories. I tell that story in particular um, how crazy this whole project was and what happened. I'll just, I'll just give you a hint. Mm -hmm. We were going to shoot a different TV show. It was going to be a treasure hunting TV show, TV show in the deserts near Paracas, one of the most arid and inhospitable places on the face of the planet. And it was going to be great until the Peruvian mob got involved. <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, so, so that's a little teaser. I tell that story in full and also, for people who sign up for annual membership, they can go watch. They get a they get a a uh, early access advanced screening of three episodes in this TV show that I'm talking about that has not aired anywhere else. They can actually go and watch it for free if they sign up for an annual membership over there on uh, the AlbertoAnalysis.com. But um, and the reason why. I, I say that is because the story I'm, I'm about to tell relates directly to one of those films. One of the most adventurous things that I did with Anselm in Peru and, and Anselm and his sons, Anselm has a couple of sons and they're very adventurous, just like him. And Anselm's in his sixties and th this guy's in his sixties and, and he's out there, you know, in, in the, in the Andes with me, going on these expeditions. So Anselm uh, contacted me one day and said, he said, Tim, I, I just got a phone call from a contact of mine in Peru. He says that he knows the location of a hitherto undiscovered lost city. Okay. And he said, Anselm said to me, do you want to go after this? Do you want to go explore this? And I said, absolutely. Let's do it. How do you say so, no? And uh, and uh, my partner, Gary Haven, was on board. Let's go for it. So uh, long story short, I have a lot of. I have a lot of long stories short because uh, <laughs> there's so many ridiculous details involved in all of this. But mm -hmm. I ended up in the Andes, in a remote area of the Andes Mountains on some of the most dangerous roads in the world with Anselm P. Rambla and our expedition team, including, by the way, Chase Kletsky, who uh, members of the UFO community will recognize that name, Chase Kletsky, uh, who's a forensic uh, investigator. And uh, Chase is just an, an, an amazing, adventurous lady in her own right and, and just a top-notch investigator and so me and anselm and chase and our team we made our way into the andes mountains and into this very remote area and we discovered the ruins of a lost city and it's a it's it's a as i said a hitherto undiscovered lost city we made the official discovery but have not yet published it mm -hmm. um it is in we filmed it and it's in one of the episodes that I mentioned that are available on my member site right now. Um, and that was an extraordinary experience and could turn out to be very significant, what we discovered. I could imagine. We discovered the ruins of uh, a very large city. And the locals refer to it as Tauripunku. 
Taripunku. So it's the lost city of Taripunku. And for those of you who are familiar with Pumapunku in, in Tiwanaku, you'll know that the word punku means gate. And Tauri happens to be um, a, a lepin legume. And that's the name for that particular legume is Tau Tauri. So it's called the, the Tauri Gate, basically. And it was uh, a phenomenal experience. Um, we discovered uh, human remains. We discovered lots and lots of ruins. Um, we brought LIDAR with us. It was just a, it was just a wild adventure.